Boom. Salutations. I hope this finds you well. Um, lately, I've gotten a lot of responses that are really positive about my YouTube channel. So, honestly, that's helping a lot of people more than what I'm seeing on the numbers and everything. And I want to say thank you very much. I appreciate every one of you and all the people that have said that and taken time to watch the videos and being very encouraging. That's a wonderful support system, and I appreciate that. Um, one thing that's come up that has been mentioned, <clears throat> excuse me, is that I've been doing a lot of focusing on earthbound spirits lately and talking about that a lot and not much of the extraterrestrial thing. And a lot of people say, I really like when you talked about the extraterrestrial thing and your experiences. So I'm going to definitely try to um, wet some whistles, so to speak, and touch on something because now my experiences aren't always being on ships by any stretch. That's something that seemed to happen when I was younger. Now it's all information comes in. It comes through quite a bit. So I want to talk about that. And the truth is that the earthbound spirit thing has become a little bit encompassing and uh, consuming for me. That I'm starting to do a lot of that work uh, now that's not social media related. So that uh, has taken me a bit off the trail. But uh, they're all connected in ways that we um, you know, probably don't understand. So anyway, what I want to go to, going back to the sudden this extraterrestrial or space-oriented star intelligences, is that I pick up information, all right? Like so many of you that watch these videos. And uh, when I picked up, I'll tell you, this concerns the James Webb's telescope, the new telescope that was launched, what, not long ago. And they took that first uh, deep field image that was focusing on a space of air, a space of, uh, an uh, area of space that's the size of a sand, a piece of sand, a grain, a grain of sand. Very small in a space that they thought was mostly more dim and that wasn't much going to be there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Allergy season. So when um, uh, these, uh, when these actually, these uh, photo comes in of this, it's actually got thousands, of, I'd say, it looks to me like maybe close to a thousand galaxies there. And they're all lit up and it's, it's a beautiful picture. And they're focusing on things that are like infrared and different nanospectrums that the Hubble cannot do. So I find that fascinating. When looking at that, all right, I started picking up information, especially on one particular galaxy that is in, it's in kind of the top left. I'll put several pictures up, and you'll see it. It's golden. It's got a golden arc over it. And that's around it kind of, not full, but like half. And I started picking up a lot from that particular galaxy. And I find that fascinating, picking up that when I was told by this individual, Insectoid Xandar, a Yandar it sounded like, but anyway, um, I'm going to talk about him more on a different, on a different uh, video actually that I'll be doing over Insectoids. So that'll be interesting in kind of tying that together. But what he had said to me was that to go um, like a 900, what was it, 900 billion light years out, outside the space-time continuum, where like they were from, which implies there are more thought forms and things of that name out there, that, that, that kind out there. But this current SMAC 0723 is uh, 4 billion light years out. So that's just kind of putting you where we're dealing with with distances there, and how I was told by these alliance individuals that I've dealt with the extragalactic interdimensional cooperative alliance, how they're actually much more um, dealing with, I don't understand what they're actually, what, how the space is, and we don't understand these things, and uh, what that actually encompasses. So I think that's what we're seeing there. Now, what I pick up when looking at that, and especially that particular galaxy, that they say it's looking like that because so much of them are dealing not just redshift, but also the gravitational lensing effect makes it look like that. But what I'm picking up, what I pick, picked up from there, was the beings there, that one, it's like, there's no other way to say it, but a type of uh, Christ consciousness energy there, and the beings there, I think you're dealing with a lot of thought forms also in that way, but higher thought forms, and when dealing with that, I picked up and kind of correlate that with the Uranta book, I didn't bring my copy, but there'll be a picture on the, on the beginning and ends, so most of you already know what that is, and kind of looking at that book, and putting something that I think is connected to that, would be um, what they call the classifications of living beings on page 330, all right? And connect that also what they call the celestial 
cele uh, celestial artesians, and that's called that's on page 497, and that's going along with what I especially think is located there as far as being wise, as far as consciousness wise. I think also the Uranta book calls them brilliant evening stars. So look up what they say those classifications of universal living beings and personalities are in conjunction with this. And I think that's something more of that nature you've got there. Beings that are right now no longer existing like what we're seeing there. That was billions and billions of years ago. You've got a whole nother evolution going on there now. That's why we have to expand our terms of consciousness when dealing with this. And how much of this is portions of ours, our immortal souls, dealing and coming back and interacting with us. So it's very fascinating, you know. Um, one other thing, when dealing with the, the Uranta book, there's a gentleman that has commented on a couple of my videos, and I can't seem to find his question, so I can't, I want to say his name was Wolf or Steven or something like that, and I'm, and I'm trying to respond, but I can't find his question. He asks questions about the Uranta book, and these three beings here, the throne beings, I've discussed in another video, okay, um, a couple of different videos, and he thought that they might be what the Uranta book calls either Veronidex sons or Lanidex sons. I know pretty much, I can't remember what those are, and I can't disagree with that, okay? I can't confirm or disagree. What's interesting about that with Veronidex and Lanidex, they occur in three, like these do, and, they, and it describes them being over regions of space, like these beings were over the Pleiadian section, sector. So that's kind of interesting, or at least coordinated or something. So he's got right that there's some similarities there. So could those classifications be correct? Possibly. Um, I kind of go more with J.J. Hurtock's book and the Keys of, e or the Keys of Enoch concerning throne beings. So that's uh, everything I wanted to throw at you right there and thinking about, once again, those beings that exist as angelic forms, thought forms, and how this will be so far away from this planet in different spectrums of what our science is discovering. If you see they found that many galaxies in a grain of sand area in the sky, that tells you how vast creation is. And that's what these beings of this extragalactic interdimensional alliance are telling me I don't get it. I see it now. Our science is just breaching that. That goes way beyond the Uranta book. So please subscribe. I want to thank my Patreon people. They're the only reason I'm still here. Thank you for everybody supporting. Please hit the like button. Hit, hit the um, subscription brother button. Everybody, like, a lot of people tell me that I've had to hit it three times now. Go ahead and knock that for me. I'm not going away. I'm going to try to beat that algorithm. Much love to everyone. Peace.